The Boeing 747 is the most popular cargo plane in the skies. This is a huge aircraft. She carries half the world's freight. Uh, push boy, push boy. Today's cargo is not only precious. It is very expensive equipment, several million dollars worth. It's unpredictably dangerous. They can ignite and that's it. To pull off this risky mission. Deadlines are absolutely everything. It'll take grit. <laughs> unflinching focus wait wait the whole time is game of inches and nothing short of a miracle anything can happen at any moment because it's motor racing thank you everybody stare at this airplane because it's beautiful beautiful bird it is legendary and people know that the world's biggest 747 is touching down at Russia's busiest airport, just outside of Moscow. One two one decimal night, and average cargo nine three one eight. But this plane won't be here for long. Bridge cargo nine three one eight, contact Moscow control one. The Boeing 747-8F is so advanced, it's always in demand. The North Cargo Door reaches out to lot and unlock the big and huge cargoes. Fully loaded, she can take 139 metric tons of just about anything, anywhere. We carry uh, whales, we carry uh, horses, we carry everything up to some space devices, some space equipment. The, the range is so wide that uh, every time is different. Today, uh, two AirBridge Cargo Airlines 747 freighters are en route to Hong Kong to fetch a fleet of cutting-edge cargo. Formula E is the world's only fully electric auto racing championship. Launched in 2014, these cars reach speeds over 137 miles per hour. It's the right. and he is out of the race. Thanks to high-tech batteries and fearless drivers, over a dozen Formula One racers have jumped ship to be a part of this new electrifying twist on classic motorsport. With events on five continents, Formula E has attracted millions of fans worldwide. I don't believe the sexy, innovative future of racing. In Hong Kong is Massimo Ferroni. He's head of motorsports for DHL, one of the world's leading logistics companies. We have a big job in front of us, uh, very, very long uh, working hours. Massimo and his DHL crew are shipping 40 e-cars to the United Kingdom to get ready for their next race. Okay, take two and we double stack teams, one. The moment the checkered flag drops, Massimo's crew must load 200 tons of cars and spare parts. These giant boxes are custom designed for the aircraft's cargo bay. I'm thinking about what will happen just after the race, when all the teams will have to pack and we have to load all our trucks. Two 747 freighters will be arriving to airlift the entire Formula E fleet back to base in England. With their giant batteries, each car weighs more than 1,700 pounds. We have 24 hours to dismantle, break everything, pack inside their boxes, and load and take to the airport and deliver to the airline. The Formula E Championship Series runs over 10 months in 10 cities around the world. Five red lights will come on, and then we'll be underway. And race two is going. It's a great start. It's a stunning start. With only a few weeks between each race, it's all on DHL to stick to the schedule. You have a lot of stress because you have very short deadlines right. to meet. If you don't deliver cars, there won't be any race. Back in Moscow, pre-flight preparations to the 747s are already underway. Today we're doing the flight to Hong Kong. Once a pilot in the Soviet Air Force, Captain Ruslan Isatulin has been flying jumbos for most of his career. He will pilot this Airbridge 747-8F that in a few hours will be filled with Formula E cargo. This is a huge aircraft. Just on the look inside, you might see just on the dimension, the length is around 76 meters from nose to the tail. Every flight begins with a walk-around inspection. 
We have to check its aircraft skin, no any damage. Inside the engine, uh, check the blades. And uh, right now we have a review here. Uh -huh. Ruslan and, and his co-pilot, Sergei Gavrikov, will fly the big bird to Hong Kong pick up the Formula E race cars, and then return to Moscow. After refueling, the plane will continue on to her final destination, the Formula E headquarters near Derby, England. Let's go. Okay. The, the fuel truck is on position, and the refueling is in progress. This airplane uh, has five main tanks and two reserves, and uh, with the total fuel on, on board, this airplane can fly around 14 or 15,000 kilometers. Carrying up to 181 tons of fuel, this Boeing cargo jet could fly nonstop from Moscow to Hong Kong and back without refueling. At 250 feet in length, the 747-8F is the longest commercial aircraft in the world, and it's as tall as a six-story building. Wingtip to wingtip, it stretches 225 feet 23 feet longer than a pro hockey rink. Everything ready? And the, car, car, the car, cargo is ready. The cargo is ready. Yes, okay. ready. This main deck alone can hold 34 loading pallets. Okay. High tech engines keep all that weight in the air. This new engine is very good on fuel. Every Boeing 747 8F is equipped with four General Electric NX engines. One engine produces the same thrust as the eight engines on the original B-52 bomber. The engine's fan blades spin rapidly to compress the air, which is then sprayed with fuel. An electric spark lights the mixture, sending the expanding burning gases blasting out the nozzle. As the jet exhaust fires backward, the engine and the heavy aircraft are thrust forward. If we take more cargo, we need, the aircraft needs to produce more uh, lift, just to keep aircraft in the air. Once in the air, those four engines move the plane at a cruising speed of 488 knots. At this speed, it can travel the length of three football fields per second. The plane's updated wing design also helps make it more aerodynamic. This is a unique uh, shape of wing, the winglet looks uh, like a rake and uh, it produces less drag and more lift. While ground crews in Moscow complete pre-flight aircraft maintenance, on the tight Hong Kong Formula E circuit, there are plenty of thrilling moments, but some heartbreak too. Coming into a hairpin turn, Dragon Racing's car number six hit the wall. The driver is safe, but the same can't be said for the car. Both the damaged vehicle and its volatile lithium ion battery must be inspected before leaving Hong Kong. Going on right now? We'll patch the car back together as much as we can, uh, to make it rollable if it's, if it's got suspension damage. This will put the Dragon Racing team behind schedule. With the race over, Pete anxiously waits for the damaged car to return from the track. Gonna be all right there, I don't know, I haven't seen the car yet. It looked like a big hit. With the flight deadline, the Dragon Racing Team gets right down to disassembling the other race cars. They start by cooling some seriously hot batteries. There's no aircon on a race car. It's hot, it's humid. We need to get the battery temperature down and the only way to do that is to use dry ice to cool the air that's being passed through the radiators. And that's one of the challenges, doing everything in one day. You heat the battery up to around about 60 degrees, you've got four hours to get it back down to 25 degrees to go again. Go ahead. Massimo okay. supervises the packing of 10 Formula E team's equipment. Each team has two drivers. Each driver has two cars. That's 40 cars. You need a 40 driver? Yes, so we'll need a yeah. forklift. Here in front? Yep. We will do shifts of people working all night and all day, ongoing, until we finish the job. Back in Russia, the crew heads onto the flight deck for the DHL mission. 
And uh, after departure as well, we have a frequency 108 decimal one. Check. It's a good one? Check. Yes. We're ready to fly. As Ruslan and Sergei await clearance from Moscow Air Traffic Control. Airport 1409. Five time zones to the east. Massimo is packing as fast as he can. This is one flight he can't afford to miss. The clock is ticking. It's close to the start of our job. The colossal Boeing 747-8F hurtles into the clouds high above Moscow. Pilots Ruslan and Sergei are on a mission. 276. 276. They'll fly to Hong Kong to pick up Formula E race cars and then return to Moscow to refuel. Then the plane will head on to her final destination, the Formula E headquarters near Derby, England. On the ground in Hong Kong, Massimo Ferroni, head of motorsports for logistics company DHL, has only 10 hours before the freighters touch down. The main challenge for us would be to respect the timing given by the airline. Massimo must get all the Formula E cargo packed up and off to the airport. But there's a roadblock. DHL is driving in and out tonight. Which, which way are you going? We're coming this way with Tecro trucks. A uh, slight, slight concern here because the issue? if the trucks has to be doing an S-curve. Getting the big trucks onto the tight circuit. Yeah, this is an important meeting because we are planning the way to come in tonight with trucks. I'm not talking about the barriers. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about the road. Uh, how long is your truck? 40-foot truck. 40-foot truck. It's, it's quite difficult. We have to open the gate that will allow all our trucks to come in and go out. Big cities present big challenges. Right now, Hong Kong is giving Massimo a headache. The ring of cars having a problem. Tight roads and an even tighter deadline. We have a short window to deliver all the material to the airport. We really need to push. The Dragon Racing Team is already behind schedule. One of their cars was damaged and still hasn't been released by track officials. If the, uh, the battery is above 80% charge, uh, we legally can't transport it by airplane. Charged lithium ion batteries are volatile and have been known to burst into flame. So batteries must be drained before they are allowed to fly. Damaged batteries are even more dangerous and cannot be transported by plane. Formula E's lightweight batteries pack a serious punch, pushing race cars to top speeds of nearly 140 miles per hour. And they both off! But all that energy comes at a price. Batteries can ignite in extreme conditions, such as crashes. When a lithium ion cell fails, it generates more heat than it can let off. If one cell fails, it can combust and cause a chain reaction. Fire would spread rapidly to other cells. On an airplane flying at 30,000 feet, the results could be catastrophic. They don't need oxygen. So they have within them all the means of burning because they generate their own chemicals that keep the fire going. Dragon Racing's damaged car finally returns from the track. The main thing is just to get the car into a state where it will roll into the box. Repairing the suspension takes extra time. Yeah, the wheel's bent. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. It's more like... Yeah. It's done the caliper. But the battery is the real issue. Uh, yeah, I had a chance, and it's cracked. The structural part of the battery is cracked, so it wouldn't be good for us. Pete has to determine if this battery is a safety hazard. There can be no risk of explosion or fire. Yeah, we do have a lot of concerns because we, we transport a lot of lithium-ion batteries. The Dragon Racing Team has a huge to-do list. On an aircraft, obviously, in the hold, it gets very cold. So we need to drain the water out, otherwise it will freeze and crack water pipes and radiators. Just going to bleed the air out of the, um, the gear shift system because it's going to go on an airplane. 
And we don't want the air bottle blowing up on our plane. You got everything you need? Yeah, I think so. Good. Well, all right. OK. Each car goes in a dedicated box. Uh, they've taken the nose off and the rear wing off, disassembled those, put on transport tyres, and it'll slide in. Meanwhile, with the race barriers removed, forklift stack Massimo's packages for the drive to the Hong Kong airport. This is the first team that we are loading, was the first one that finished the pack. Tilt forward a little bit. And it's going on the yeah. first flight. We absolutely need to pack up before the deadline. Spares done? Uh, yes. Yeah. I believe so, yes. Sure. Go ahead. Team after team, all 40 cars are stored in giant jewel cases and then loaded onto trucks. The first truck is gone with the base car and the safety cars. Then there are the spare parts. It's a struggle. It's always a struggle. We carry so much stuff, it's, it just takes forever. There's no way Pete will rush his crew. Safety standards are rigorous. To keep that stuff from sliding, and then just double check it before they seal before you seal it. We could have a fire, take a plane down. Everything is done, you know, per the safety requirements that's uh, that's mandated. The crew finally completes the inspection of the vehicle, and the battery is drained to a safe level. Everything um, should travel okay. The battery itself is intact. Only the protective casing was damaged in the crash. Pete gets the green light to fly just as the world's largest 747 begins its descent into Hong Kong. Have you are ready for descent uh, to reach level 200 by my... Plus 100. After a 10-hour flight from Moscow, the 747-8F touches down at Hong Kong International. Back in the Dragon racing pit, the damaged race car is rolled into its box, and Massimo hurries to get the remaining gear aboard the truck. Here is critical to load exactly on inside the shape of the truck and fix it properly on the truck to avoid any movement during the transport. Tilt forward a little bit. If we miss the deadline we have received from the hairline to deliver our goods to the airport, we will have massive problems. The Boeing 747-8F has arrived from Russia, ready to be loaded. DHL trucks carrying the Formula E fleet are on time. 200 tons of cars and parts. Time to hustle. Oh! Oh! Yeah, yeah, one by one. All the work is conducted in a restricted area, well away from the regular airport operations. When you move the boxes, be careful to not touch one on the other one, if it's possible. The DHL team secures the Formula E equipment onto pallets custom built for the 747's cargo bay. Down! Down! Okay, wait, wait, before, before to start, we need to check the size of the pallet, okay, on the top of the air. DHL Deputy Managing Director of Motorsports, Pierre Luigi Ferrari, oversees the operation. I'm here to supervise the job of everybody. His team has only five hours before departure. We have to return everything, and the flight doesn't wait for us. We have to go fast. Time is really tight. The loading process is meticulous. The dimensions of each pallet are calibrated to fit inside the cargo bay of the big Boeings. The heavy lifter can take 139 tons spread across 46 pallets. Each one has an average length of 9.5 feet and a width of 7.5 feet. This massive payload is the equivalent of 44 large SUVs. All time is game of inches. <laughs> All time is game of inches. In the Hong Kong office of Airbridge Cargo Airlines, loadmasters like So Kai Yu create plans that maximize every inch of the cargo hold. We have many restrictions. For example, the the 
contour size, uh, different contour size and different position have their work restriction. Sokayu creates a load plan based on pallet size and weight. Like passengers, each pallet has a designated position in the cargo bay. If it's not in correct position, the cargo will have problem. The aircraft may not take off and landing with safety. Back on the apron, the first pallets arrive from the warehouse. We are going to install the nose tie down. This one is used to stabilize the aircraft for cargo loading. During loading and unloading, the nose of the aircraft is anchored with a steel cable. Without it, strong winds and unbalanced cargo could cause the plane to tip, damaging the airframe. If we don't put the tie down, there will be an accident. Now that it's secured, crews can head inside. It's 2 a.m. We finally started loading on the first aircraft. This is the second pilot we're loading. In under three hours, the Jumbo's upper and lower cargo decks will be filled with over 28,000 cubic feet of freight. Thanks to her ultra-efficient automated railing system. Now the pilot has been moved from the dolly to the lifting machine. Now this machine will leave the pallet to the level of the loading deck and it will go inside of the aircraft. This has to go in a very specific spot because the distance, the overhang of the box must be in the exact contour of the aircraft. Back at the warehouse. We need to have a piece of wood to put down on the wheels to avoid to touch the front. Pierre Luigi is grappling with the trickiest pallets of all. Definitely this one is the more complicated one. More. The safety and race director vehicles must be driven onto custom two-car pallets. It's incredibly difficult. Now, to not damaging the car, to allow the driver of the car to come out, to not touch on the top on the, on the pallets, we have to be really careful. The top car goes on fairly easily, but the bottom one is another story. Sebastian draws the short straw. It's his turn to park a $100,000 car within an inch of sharp metal girders. We talk about the centimeter and the car costs a lot of money. We cannot damage the car. Stop. A little bit more, yeah. Stop, one moment. OK, come, come. Yeah. No, it's OK. It's in. Come. Come. Straight. Straight. Wait. Wait. Oh, a little bit there. Yeah, now, that. yeah, 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 yeah. Come. OK, stop. Yeah, we are in. OK. Be careful. If you want to see here, it doesn't have a lot of space, OK? It's a tight squeeze. Sebastian has made it over the first hurdle. <laughs> but there's more to come. The next step is getting these cars onto a plane. The box cannot touch the aircraft. If the cargo makes contact with the plane, the damage could be devastating. Massimo and his crew have to be alert. <laughs> Duty manager Machuan Ingini now supervises the loading. Okay. He works for Hactel, the company responsible for ramp handling at Hong Kong International Airport. We have to monitor the clearance between the cargoes and the aircraft sidewall. The 20 foot long pallet heads into the belly of the beast. It's a very tight fit. And when we rotate the pilot inside, we have to pay extra attention on it. The 747-8F is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. One slip here would not only be costly, but possibly career-ending. They get it through without a scratch. The crew now hustles to fill up the balance of the giant hold. We have still two hours to load the entire aircraft. 
the power rollers move the cargo through the cavernous interior. Once in place, a super secure locking system immobilizes the loaded pallets. Every locking system is responsible for maybe one or two directions. As you can see, this one, actually, is, it is protecting the rear direction and also the up direction. Even with the automated railing system, some crates need that extra nudge to lock into place. The connection of the roller and the pilot base is, is very bad. We have to use manual to push the pilot. Push boy, push boy. The departure is getting closer. Time is short. Only now, Massimo notices a potentially serious problem. One box is too close to the plane wall. If it shifts during flight, even just a few inches, it could puncture the fuselage, putting the flight in jeopardy. I don't like that, definitely. It is not safe. Ninety minutes before takeoff, this Boeing 747-8F is not going anywhere until Massimo solves a potentially deadly situation. It can't touch, can't, no way, can't, because otherwise it, there are damages on the aircraft that is not safe. If the plane makes a sudden maneuver in midair, heavy cargo near the wall could shift and puncture the fuselage. They have to turn it uh, 180 degrees, because otherwise it's touching, you see? As exacting as the load plan is, it's just a plan. When cargo is put in place, reality forces a change. Massimo needs to reassess the situation, and he needs to find a solution quickly. The ramp, take the other car boxes like this one down so I can check they are loaded properly. Okay. By rotating the pallet, the leading edge of the cargo is at a safe distance. The departure is getting closer, the time is short. No! No! Outside on the apron, Pierre Luigi notices another problem. That definitely is not safe, eh? We have to say to the guy to check again. No, this one is really <laughs> check with the guy, yeah? Or yeah. safe the guy. The Formula E cars are powered by lithium-ion batteries, and those batteries are as volatile as they are heavy. Million dollars of race cars and more, we have battery. The batteries need to be kept stable. If they smash against each other, even in protective fireproof boxes, it's still possible the electrical components inside could short circuit and cause a fire. Okay. A member of the team quickly fixes the loose netting. Only now, there's another big threat. Oh, the typhoon, right? I checked the weather. Regional operations and ground handling manager for ABC Airlines, Eric Zaya, receives an important weather alert from head office that could delay this flight's departure. Typhoon Sarika has hit the Philippines hard and is threatening to slam into Hong Kong. The cargo crew will need to pick up the pace if the planes are going to dodge the rough weather. They're quite sleepy at the bottom of the pilot, right? Because the, wet, the, the weather is, is raining right now. And then if the pilot is too heavy, then we'll be stuck here, cannot move. The crew has to push the heavy loads manually. This takes a lot of muscle, which they have, and extra time, which they don't. The plane is scheduled to leave in less than an hour. Engine number four, to look inside, no any damage, the blades are in good conditions. No any foreign objects inside. On the ground, Captain Ruslan Isatulin begins his pre-flight inspection. The nose and the right boat as well as the pitot statics and the angle of attacks. Airline safety protocol requires a member of the flight crew to inspect the cargo before takeoff. I check the space between the ceiling and walls. 
First Officer Alexander Yolkin wants to know exactly where the batteries are located. If I check the, see the dangerous goods, maps, I should know where is it. If a battery somehow ignites during flight, seconds will count. Alexander will have one chance to prevent the fire from spreading. Yeah, everything is good. Before Ruslan can complete his inspection, right, yeah. maintenance uh, crews discover yes. a problem. Very dangerous. The plane's front tire is damaged. The loading must stop. I hope they can finish as soon as possible. Otherwise, we will have a delay. Okay. If ground crews can't fix the problem in time, the Formula E shipment could miss its flight window. The loading must stop because the jet it, it leaves the airplane, so we can change the tire. And but everything's loading completely stopped there because CG will ship. It's take approximately 30 minutes. I hope we can catch up. Maybe the tire will burst and everything go down. Everything can happen. Hing has over two decades of experience with the big Boeings. I'm out changing the wheel. Safety is always our top priority. It's not as fast as a pit stop, but he swaps out the new tire in under 30 minutes. We can start the loading again. They've got four more big pallets to go. Takeoff is in 15 minutes. They're cutting it close with the approaching typhoon. In the meantime, Captain Ruslan Isatulin double checks the new tire. I have to check, you know, no any leakage on the strut. You know, just, uh, it's a clear and uh, no any damage. Two final pallets to load. So we're almost ready to go. Yeah, yeah, almost yeah. ready. The go. most important point is we have to check all the cargo is on board. You, well, I worry about it, huh? On the flight deck, Ruslan checks the weather one last time. This is a, a metro chart, and uh, our route is the red one. When the typhoon comes here, the wind is so strong, and uh, just uh, to handle the aircraft in this condition is very, very hard. With Hong Kong still in the path of Typhoon Sarika, the flight crew must get ahead of the weather. The is complete, and the fuel is complete, uh -huh. so. I think we can close it off. Finally, after running on adrenaline for 24 hours, Massimo and Pierre Luigi can get some rest. Job done. We make the schedule, and now I can go in bed. Sequence four threes and two and one. Start in four three. Number Charlie Niner. We are ready for push and start. The plane heads for the runway. Engine number four and three start. This heavy lifter is right on schedule. Lights on. Clear for takeoff. As it accelerates, it reaches a takeoff speed of 175 knots or 200 miles per hour. Takeoff. Thrust lift. Over 100 tons of cargo, fuel, and airplane lift effortlessly into the Hong Kong night. The flight should be smooth. The visibility is good. It's uh, more than 10 kilometers. The 747-8F will fly at 34,000 feet over mainland China and Mongolia before touching down for a refueling stop in Moscow. The cargo should be checked, and the crew will be changed. A few hours in, and it's time for First Officer Alexander Yolkin's freight check. For safety, he carries an oxygen supply. During flight, nobody can be on the main deck without oxygen bottle, because we don't have a here uh, oxygen mass. If cabin pressure on the aircraft were to fail, the captain would immediately send a signal to anyone outside the flight deck. Everything is good. There's no problem. The same as before they go. Several hours later, 
pilots Ruslan and Sergei begin their descent into Moscow. As well has been checked too. No time is checked, so remember if the weather is good, expect runway 24 left. According to the 24 right is closed. Speed break up. It's early morning in Moscow when the 747-8F touches down. Ground crews are in place, prepared to turn the big bird around. Uh, now the planes are refueled, and we make a final walk around before the flight. In a couple minutes, we'll go to England. A fresh crew takes over the flight deck for the final leg of the journey. The crew changed uh, because uh, of duty time. So um, the, the flight you had before is a relatively long one, and that's why we continue this flight to East Midlands. It will take four hours to bring this jet from Moscow to the East Midlands Airport in Derby, England. The approaching to England, we will have uh, some turbulence because of the uh, weather, because low, low pressure system uh, over the Great Britain. Captain Igor Piskovoy will be facing some rough weather himself. Turbulence is a cargo pilot's worst nightmare. Flaps 20. Flaps 20. For co-pilot Ivan Goncharuk, there's more than weather making him nervous. I am trainee captain, so it's my instructor. Igor is supervising Ivan's final stage of training. Ivan is hoping to become a 747 captain himself. Ivan is going to be, he's, he's captain to be, so that's, that's going uh, to be the historic moment for him. Very young, but knowing much. Okay, we're clear to destination, East Midlands flight plan route. If Ivan makes the grade, at 28, he'll be one of the youngest captains in 747 history. Left heading 110 degrees, Serbish Cargo 9 at 318. 110. 110, check. This is my 175, is heading Serbish Cargo 9 at 318. Thank you, everybody. Hoist freight. Gear up. Hell enough. Well, the weather is going to be challenging. Bad weather is routine. This cargo is anything but. The aviation industry has got a real issue with this uh, cargo. Car carrying the uh, lithium batteries is really challenging. That's why it's really, really dangerous. In 2010 and 2011, lithium ion batteries were the cause of two deadly crashes involving 747 freighters after batteries caught fire in the cargo area. The US Federal Aviation Authority now bans passenger aircraft from carrying lithium ion batteries as cargo. For some unpredicted uh, circumstances, they can ignite. We've got a relatively big experience carrying this cargo. 1,000 stable. As the 747-8F rises into the Russian night, Igor pays close attention to Yvonne's every move. He knows the fate of this mission and his own safety lie in the hands of a 28-year-old trainee. Yvonne's destination is the East Midlands Airport near Derby. Ready for briefing. Before he gets there, he has to pass through some typically nasty English weather. In operation, very fine. Flaps will be retracted until five, up to five, and the speed about 200 knots. Then uh, prepare from sea for another approach and make safe landing, okay? Mm -hmm. In the co-pilot seat, Still Captain in. Igor Piskovoy is paying close attention. Runway is applicable for Cat 3 operation, but we are going to use Cat 1 minimum 490. On final approach, Yvonne needs a steady hand. Any jolt could affect the lithium-ion batteries in his cargo bay. 
when smashes they can ignite. Just ignite and that's it. First charge with 9318, Scotty, thank you, and just confirm your routing direct to Rovni. Affirmative, uh, we are direct to uh, Rovni, I got 9318. I have communication, auto brakes, you have control. And I have control. To the end. The trainee makes a textbook landing. His mentor, Igor, goes on the radio to pass on his greetings. Good morning, Everett Cargill. Good morning, taxi fire, Alpha 10, Foxtrot, stand one. Yvonne is a step closer to becoming a captain of the iconic 747. Stop, APU. He's only got one more flight left. Yes, sir. The return leg to Moscow. Upon completion of this flight, my colleague Ivan uh, is a captain. The youngest on 747 in aviation industry. When Ivan successfully lands this aircraft back in Moscow, he'll join an elite group of pilots qualified to fly the 747. Of course, I, I'm proud to fly this aircraft. 747 is a legendary type of the airplane. This one is just a new version of that. <laughs> pilots flying this airplane can really feel themselves sort of attached to this legend. And it's really good feeling. It's really great. As the sun rises over the English Midlands, DHL's Massimo Ferroni heads out onto the apron. I'm here because I have to see with my eyes the material coming off from the aircraft and start the loading of trucks so we can deliver. Massimo first checks in with the pilots to make sure the flight went according to plan. Good? Good. Everything's yeah. fine. Yeah. Did you have a safe flight? Yeah. Everything was good. A little bit bumpy, but it's yeah. fine. The boxes containing race cars and their gear are unloaded. I deliver the material back to Formula E in Donington. At the nearby Formula E headquarters, the Dragon Racing Team waits to see if the gear in those boxes is intact. This is the first opportunity that we have to open the crates, make sure all of our equipment is still in one piece. You just never know what happens sometimes in, uh, in air transport. This is definitely the moment of truth. The team takes the cars inside for a closer look. We're just checking the, uh, the continuity to make sure that there's no uh, voltage leaks from the battery. Uh, to make sure it's safe to, to touch. Um, everything is good. Safe and sound and on time. The Formula E racers and their volatile batteries can be charged up for the next competition. It is pretty amazing. Um, you know, you, you think about uh, how many people have actually had to move the crates. Any one of those people could make a mistake, drop a crate, uh, stab it with a forklift. Pretty amazing that it, it actually does make it here without any damage. Teamwork wins the race every time. And this race against time is anchored by the Boeing 747-8F. Since her maiden flight in 1969, the 747 has captured the imagination of pilots and plane lovers around the world. Whether its passengers are people or race cars, its future is as secure as its legend.